Hey guys, it's Miss Tanya. Chapter three of Flat Stanley. Stanley the Kite. Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys out with him on Sunday afternoons to, mu to a museum or roller skating in the park, but it was difficult when they were crossing the streets or moving about in the crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled from his side and Mr. Lambchop worried about speeding taxis or the hurrying people that might accidentally knock them down. It was easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself to carry. It was as simple as carrying a parcel and he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Stanley did not mind being carried because he never much liked to walk. Arthur didn't like to walk either, but he had to, and it made him mad. One Sunday afternoon in the street, they met Ralph Jones, an old college friend of Mr. Lambchop's. Well, George, I see you've brought some wallpaper, Mr. Jones said. Going to decorate your house, I suppose? Wallpaper, said Mr. Lambchop. Oh no, this is my son Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do, Stanley said. Nice to meet you, young fella, the man said. George, he said to Mr. Lambchop, that boy is flat. Smart too, Mr. Lambchop said. Stanley is third from the top in his class at school. Oh, phooey, said Arthur. And this is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lambchop said. And he will apologize for being rude. Arthur could only blush and apologize. Mr. Lambchop rolled Stanley up again and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on the way home. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying on the floor near the bookcase. He had a pile of great many volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on top of himself. Put more on me, Arthur said. Don't just stand there, help me. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop sent him back to bed. But the next morning they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help but be jealous, they said. Be nice to him. You're his big brother after all. The next Sunday, Stanley and Arthur went to the park by themselves. The day was sunny, but quite windy, and many older boys were flying beautiful, enormous kites with long tails made in all the colors of the rainbow. Arthur just sighed. Someday, he said. I will have a big kite and I will win a kite flying co contest and be famous like everybody else. Nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents had said. He went to a boy whose kite had broken and borrowed a large spool of sp string. You can fly me, Arthur, he said. Come on. He attached the string to himself and gave Arthur the spool to hold. He ran lightly across the grass sideways to get up speed, and then he turned to meet the breeze. Up, 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 went Stanley, being a kite. He knew just how to manage on the gust of wind. He faced full into the wind if he wanted to rise and let it take him from behind when he wanted to speed. He only had to turn his thin edge to the wind carefully and, at a, and little at a time so that it did not hold him back. And then he would slip gracefully down towards the earth again. Arthur let out all the string and Stanley soared high above the trees. A beautiful sight in his red shirt and blue trousers against the pale blue sky. Everybody in the park stood still to watch. Suddenly, Stanley swooped right and then left in long match swoops. He held his arms by his side and zoomed at the ground like a rocket and curved up towards the sun. His side slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses and a star. Nobody had ever flown that way, Stanley 
flown the way Stanley Lambchop flew that day, and probably nobody ever will again. After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching, and Arthur got tired of running around with an empty spool. Stanley went right on, showing off and showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left the spool wedged in the fork of a tree. He didn't notice while he was eating the hot dog that the wind was blowing the string and tangling about in the tree. The string got shorter and shorter, but Stanley did not realize how low he was until the leaves brushed his feet. And then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches. Fifteen minutes passed before Arthur and the other boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley did not speak to his brother that evening, and at bedtime, even though Arthur had apologized, he was still mad. Alone with Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Mrs. Lam Lambchop sighed and shook her head. You're at the office all day having fun, she said. You don't realize what I go through with the boys. They are very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Please be patient, dear. It's just phases. That is the end of chapter three. I will see you all back here tomorrow for chapter four. Have a great day. Bye.